people deluded I'm back again good old Soho Square <sighs> the background noise the background noise literally anytime I press start but I'd like to think by our own standards we're doing all right it's all right today but yeah man got some thoughts to share with you and you lot know how the drill goes at this point I talk you listen you give me your opinions in the comments and whatnot so it's appreciative that you're back here again but in relation to Arsenal, I've been, you know, trolling the internet as you do this morning, just as a football fan. And a bit of an old subject, but let's go over Danny Ceballos again, people. And I think Danny Ceballos, it's a bit, his situation is delicate. There's, just, there's not just one single position to look at it. I think for him, he's got to take some responsibility. He's, what, 20, turning 23. Yes, he was a young Jet Batiste, but this is his third team in quick succession. He's been at Real Madrid, he's been at Arsenal. He's shown what he, more so at Madrid, he's shown what he can do, but he's not been a starter. Obviously, he's been young, been developing, but he's not been a starter. And he's got to do a lot of soul searching. I mean, you look at it, you keep hearing Arteta says fully fit. Um, I mean, he needs to be fully fit and fighting for his space and whatnot. Apparently, sources according, uh, um, sources close to Ceballos insist he's fully fit and whatnot. Um, but there's got to be some truth behind that. Is he showing something in training? Is he not showing something in training? And he's had a couple of coaches at Madrid. He's had a couple of coaches at Arsenal. And it's not been there. I mean, you look at Joel Willock and regardless of what you want to say over Arteta's tenure here, Lomberg's tenure here and Emery. Obviously, Willock weren't, you know, the main creative player or something like that. But they've all relatively seen means to start um, Willock in that camera or just um, Joe in, in, in general ahead of Ceballos. Like I said, some situation, some of the problems in this situation have been out of his control, been turbulent management, there's been mix and match with the squads, obviously he's had injuries, but there's got to be some reason why three managers, whether there's a, a mandate from the club to play the likes of Joe Willock and bring them through or not, why they've got to have gone with Joe Willett because to be fair to Joe and it's not really the topic of this video but they, he's got to have shown something in training and for Ceballos no disrespect to Joe I love Joe but there should someone like you there should be no contest it should be completely illogical to start Joe ahead of you that's how vital you should be to this team he's come from Real Madrid Arsenal are small fry we should be looking at it as like boy Madrid we're dumb to loan you you know Madrid got to use you next year that you're assuming for the Euros I still think he'll go to the Euros but part of the reason that's not the narrative he has to take some responsibility again there's been fitness problems and again mainly under Emery there was problems fitting players in and whatnot obviously currently what goes against Ceballos is Ozil's been a bit poor in the last couple of games but everybody's been playing relatively decent in, and it's been tough for anyone to get a look in you see him as an 8 or a 10 clearly Arteta sees him as a 10 and he's going against Joe who's ahead of him Ozil seems to be ahead of him form or whatever um, Emil went out on loan as well um, so them two will play more games they can play obviously as an 8 so, um, Jaka and Torreira are clearly ahead of him in that regard and he doesn't seem to be favoured in that regard so um, it's a, it's a tough one, there's still a lot of football to be played and I can't blame him for wanting to change his situation but he, to have free, he needs to find some stability somewhere whether that's Valencia where he's been linked at, Arsenal or back at Madrid because his next club could potentially be his fourth club and he'll only be 23 apparently courtesy of the Athletic he's changed agents several times already in his career apparently like I said he sees himself as fully fit um, and sources close to the player do not believe Arteta has been sufficiently clear about what he can do to improve or where he stands in his plans. The seed of doubt grew in Ceballos' mind when he was admitted from the match they scored to face Palace. And I remember speaking about that, people. Is that he's, Arteta said that he's not, he's just cho chosen, let I me mean, move over, just chosen not to go with him. And obviously, Arteta's within his rights to use his side, his, his squad how he chooses. But when you look at Arteta, not Arteta, Ceballos' so situation individually, someone who's come from Madrid, won Champions League and things like that, does he really favour you? Are you showing something in training that he um, doesn't want to see? What aren't you showing that he wants to see? Does he just genuinely consider them other man better options? And Ozil polarises opinion, but as a past it, Ozil, who's still a baller on his day, but is past his best and is only going to get worse because of his age and whatnot. If he's ahead of you, if the tried and trusted Joe Willock, and I believe Joe's a good player, but right now he's still learning the, the, the tricks and trades, and you'd probably say 
in terms of the skill set and the creative role, the final ball and whatnot, Ceballos has that over Joe. Big up to Joe for a consistent performance and a good performance against Bournemouth. So if if if, if so Ozil in that state is seen ahead of you, if, if we're seen to want to give Joe the willingness to learn ahead of you, then you've not you're not showing something in training or you're, there is something that must concern Arteta. Obviously, He's just obviously he's here on loan and whatnot, and we paid four point, we paid five million or so for his loan, his loan or four point five. I can't remember if it was him or Sabalos, but either way, we spent a lot of money. And I hear he's on loan. He's not going to be here long term. What's the point? You know, kind of the way we're at, we might as well give experience to people that are going to be here long term. I get that, but we spent four point four point five million or so. We might as well utilize him, or we could have utilized him. It started off very well for him. Ironically, we've got Burnley on Sunday, but Burnley at home, we got two assists. Um, I think in his own words he said it feels like he's been here over 10 years people and it started well but since then it hasn't really been there really there's not too many games you can say so about as well like I said injuries haven't permitted anything have been um, stopping him from um, making performances on a, on a more regular basis you would have thought he might have started um, against Bournemouth he got 21 minutes I believe that's his first game in any capacity since November the 6th I could be wrong um, so it is what it is in that regard. Either way, I'd like to see that put to bed, really and truly. Um, apparently, his preference is to go back to La Liga with Valencia and former club Betis offering him that. Apparently, Madrid don't really want to force Arsenal's hand and want him to see out the season. But again, he's got to be selfish. If he doesn't believe he can get out of this season what he set out to at Arsenal, then he's got to keep it moving, people. Away from that, in relation to Pablo Marie, allegedly talks are ongoing. Um, Talks are still ongoing, regardless of negotiations hitting difficulties over the pre precise structure of the deal. Um, obviously, Arsenal's preference allegedly would be on loan with an option to buy. There remains belief among the Arsenal hierarchy that, contrary to their um, president's um, public stance, Flamengo would be open would be open to such a deal, but perhaps only for a significant loan fee. Supplemented apologies by additional performance related add-ons and obviously Mustafi's injury kind of forces our hands potentially as well people. Um, on Joe Willett quickly, um, he said, Arteta said, I really like Joe in that position, I think he can be an outstanding player there and he showed that yesterday and there's been three different gaffers at this club this season and they've all utilised him there. Personally, I love Joe Willock. I think he can build and be part of this team in any capacity, people. I prefer him in the pivot, like a box-to-box -box midfielder, but if he's playing 10, he has to play 10. Obviously, he was a creative, a bit more of a creative player coming through the academy, so he's got that in his skill sets. Goals and assists, he's going to need to get that. Obviously, polish up on the final ball. But in terms of the aggression he gives us, he's going the right way. And for me, personally, I would like a creative player who can play in a flat midfield free and like Kevin De Bruyne can play everywhere. Joe could potentially become that of sorts. I personally see Joe as a box-to-box -box midfielder, the dribbles, the bursting runs. I think he's got it in him to add, a, I'm not, I don't know how many goals and assists, but I think he can get that. I think he can get a couple goals from midfield and be a goal-scoring midfielder of sorts for us. Because um, I think he's, he, he's, he's got that in him and he's sown against Liverpool, he can strike a goal. And like I said, he played further forward coming from Arsenal's academy. So I'm keen to see what he's doing, man. And it's interesting to see that Joe's preferred in that role. And to be honest, we know we need a central midfielder, like a, like, you know, a defensive mid to play with Torero in his space. We know we need a creative midfielder. I'll be keen to see, and we need a centre-half. I'll be keen to see if we do go for that creative midfielder and, and, and whatnot people with what we're trying to do with Joe, with potentially Emil and other situations around that. Because Sabayo seems to be off, so we'll see what happens. Apparently, Komada, I believe, I assume that's a, a Ukrainian-based publication, has said that Arsenal and Shakhtar have agreed a deal in principle for Mavinenko. Whether that's true or not, the same publication said that um, we've agreed a fee, but we're more or less waiting to see the outcome of the Pabli Pablo Marie deal. So again, this is all paper talk. Obviously, because the window is done in, in, in on Friday, there's going to be a lot of acceleration and a lot of nonsense and a lot of twos and fours in relation to who we're going to move for. We need to get our we need to get on in true Arsenal fashion we've left it to the last minute we need a centre half or two um, assuming if these name if we've been negotiating for names for a while fair enough but you'd like to imagine we're gonna have to potentially overpay to a slight degree because with Mustafi's injury even more we're down to our bare bones and if I'm an academy centre half at Arsenal I'm kind of wondering yo with this crisis what more have I got to do to get some sort of looking in the match they squad in some capacity but for now, I've got nothing more to add. I'm going to get out of here. People, as usual, DG, I'm out.